we're back here where it all started in my backyard and I'm sitting on that same pile of lumber that I introduced you to quite some time ago. This is what's left of it. There's four pieces that are left right here. I had picked this out quite some time ago to be the gunnel caps, actually. Uh, it was sawn fairly uh, narrow or thin, actually. And uh, this is the narrowest piece of all four of the pieces right here. So this one's going to be a little bit difficult probably to get the best use out of, but the, as it goes down, it gets much, much easier. So there's some pretty nice lumber in here. And uh, basically, it, like I say, it's gonna be the gunnel caps themselves, the gunnels. The whole gunnel is the entire gunnel, whether it's the in whale and the gunnel cap and the guard and everything else, it's all the gunnel to me, but this is gonna be the gunnel caps. So what we're gonna do is load it onto a boat trailer and take it over to my shop. All right, that's good. What's it look like? Looks good. Before I get cutting any of this lumber right here or surfacing it, I didn't want to uh, erase any of this right here. This is from quite some time ago. Look at these markings right here. It says coverboard in whale. I guess this would be like the in, in whale side of it, but basically they were designated for covering boards. It says the same thing on this one right here. So it says or in whale, cover boards or in whales. So basically the in whales are already on the boat, so we're going to use these for cover boards. Right here, I'm going to cut it right there. The first thing I'm going to do with this lumber here is to shorten it up because I just don't need it to be this long. You know, uh, I can't get it onto the boat on the gunnel cap in one piece. It's going to have to go on in two pieces. So I've decided to cut each piece no longer than eight feet long and work with it at eight feet long. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do is take a folding rule and just quickly measure the width of the gunnel here. Now, it's about five inches wide. Now, that's a nice thing to know, but that measurement in itself doesn't do us any tremendous amount of good. What we're going to have to do is to kind of cut this piece off to length and then just lay it right down on top of the boat there and jockey it around a little bit, maybe end for end it a couple times. What we're trying to do is to make sure that the good wood in this piece covers the entire gunnel so that we don't have any sap wood or any bark or anything on the edges of this piece when we're done. So really is no other way other than to just lay it right on there and jockey it around a number of times and decide whether or not we think we've got it covered. And once we know that we have it in the position that we want it, we're just simply going to take a pencil and trace it out. As I'm tracing this piece out here, that doesn't have to have any tremendous uh, degree of accuracy here because the piece is going to be cut narrower than the gunnel itself is. So. Uh, it's basically just to transfer the shape of it and not necessarily the exact size of it. Okay, so now we have to decide how to cut it. Bandsaw, skill saw, big bandsaw, little bandsaw, hmm. Something like that. Let me clamp that down like that. I think I'm going to cut it with a skill saw. It's the way I used to always cut them. I'm just going to place it into position, just the same way I did the after piece. Clamp it down, move it around a little bit, like that. Make sure I'm satisfied with where it's sitting and that it covers uh, the territory that I want it to cover completely. And once I've got that one, Going to trace that one exactly the same as I did the last one. Now that we've got that piece traced out, we're going to take the piece off of the boat, unclamp it, transfer it to a couple of saw horses, and we're going to make the outside cut of those tracements first with the skill saw. Now, the skill saw really does a pretty nice job of following a line like this. You just have to be very careful how you do it. Uh, if I were to try that in a band saw, it would probably come out reasonably well too, but I can tell you for sure that I would have to plane it afterwards. I just would have to. There's no way I'm going to follow it uh, with a bandsaw and have it come out quite as nice as it would come out with the skill saw.
I just want to point out to you that uh, I've cut the outside sweep at this point, and that was pretty easy to do. And if I had made a mistake, more than likely what I would have done would have been I would have drifted away from the line. And, uh, you know, it's not a mistake that's not forgivable because you can always whittle that back off. But now I'm going to cut the inside of the sweep right here. Now we have to be real careful right here because if I should wander off that line, I'll guarantee you I'm not going to wander away from it on this side. It's going to be on the side that really makes the difference. So got to be real careful with this and uh, just go nice and slow and make sure I don't make any mistakes at all. Okay, now that we've sawn that forward piece out to shape and we've tried it back in position, I'd say it looks great. So we're going to move on to sawing the after piece out to the proper shape and uh, really isn't any different than doing the forward piece. So pretty easy to do. Uh, I think it looks fantastic just the way it is. And uh, before we actually fasten these down into position, though, we're going to remove that guard one more time because it's only been fastened on there on a temporary basis and we don't want to leave it without bedding compound behind it because that's an awful lot of surface area right there if that boat were to be turned over, say, for the winter or something like that and moisture that would get between the guard and the plank and uh, it would just hold moisture in there. I, I don't want it to do that. So I'm going to bed that piece down in position. So we're going to probably put four beads on it here because it seems to me that I can spread four beads. It doesn't have to be incredibly accurate. And when I do put it in position and clamp it in position or even fasten it with just screws, it'll squash those four beads right out 100% and cover the entire surface area of the back of that guardrail. I've decided to take an electric hand plane and just surface the very top of the guard itself, even with the very top of the shear plank itself. Now, I want the two to be very close to exactly the same height because I don't want to have to fill anything with a whole bunch of compound or anything like that. So we're just going to surface them together. And uh, that way, when we set the cap right down on there, whether we decide to bed it down or not, it won't take an awful lot of compound. I've got my first cap rail on the starboard side up in place right here. Now, I've already had it up in place and I traced it on both sides once already, but after I cut it out and I put it on there again and clamped it down, I said, I don't know, I think it maybe it could look a little bit better if I narrowed it up. So what I'm actually gonna do is put it right back down into position but I'm going to space it from the inboard edge here just a little bit, maybe 5 sixteenths of an inch or so, and uh, trace it again on the outside. So I'm going to cut it a little bit narrower, and you can see that uh, it will be at least 5 sixteenths of an inch narrower than the whole gunnel itself. When I do put it back on there, I'm actually going to space it differently than this. I'm going to space it so that it's inboard like this, so it's got like a bit of a reveal right here, uh, maybe a quarter of an inch and maybe a sixteenth of an inch to an eighth of an inch on the inboard edge right here. So I think that'll make it look better. Rather than have it just be exactly flush, you know, inboard and outboard, I used to build them that way. And um, I think it's all fine, but I just think it'll look a little bit better like this with this little bit of a reveal here and one on the inside too. It's a little bit of a detail that just makes it look a little bit nicer. Just going to get a little bit narrower. So I'm just going to trace this overhanging outboard edge. Like I say, I've cut the inboard edge already and gotten away with it. It's come out really nice and I've matched it up to the in whale. Looks great. Don't want to touch that edge again. Not going to take my chances over there. I'd rather take my chance on the outboard edge. So I've hung it over to the outboard edge. I've made a quick tracement of it. And I'm going to take it over, flip it over again and cut that little bit of it off. It should be very easy to get away with. That's the way to go about it. Just like that. 
I'm going to have a slight reveal on the inside and about a quarter of an inch on the outside here. I think that will make it look pretty nice. Now you can see that we've got both covering boards or cap rails on the starboard side sawn to shape and to the proper width and we've placed them down in position. I've got the forward one lapped over on top of the after one here. I've actually cut a scarf in the after one and uh, that's already been done so you can't see me do that but basically what I'm going to do is do exactly the same thing on the underside of this cap rail right here so it's going to match that scarf length right there. And it's going to be a little bit different than I used to do it. I used to do them on the flat or I'd make some sort of like a scarf like this that you could see from the top and it would be all right but it would be fastened together with fastenings and you know there really isn't anything any special strength about it so I thought that this boat right here I'd change it up a little bit and do a flat scarf and actually glue it together with epoxy glue because that'll just keep that gunnel of the boat nice and stiff and solid I think that's the thing to do it's changing up a little tiny bit from the way I've usually done it but I think that uh, I'll be happy with it I'm using an electric planer here to cut the scarfs on the ends of the covering boards. At this time, I'm cutting the scarf on the very bottom of the forward section of the cover board. Now, I don't have to accomplish this awfully fast. I can take my time doing it because it just doesn't matter if it takes a little bit of extra time to go about something like this or not. Just going at it kind of slow and uh, taking quite a number of strokes here. Like I said, it doesn't matter to me how many strokes I take. As long as it's easy to do and it doesn't strain the planer whatsoever and it comes out nice and sweet and smooth, that's what I'm looking for right there. Now, now I'm just finishing up planing that bottom scarf on that forward section of the covering board and as I get a little bit closer and closer to being completed I can back off on my adjustment on the planer a little bit so that I don't take so much and uh, the plane is nice and flat on the bottom. I don't have to test this thing with a straight edge or do anything like that. All I really have to do is just micro adjust the planer right down until it's barely cutting and uh, it'll pretty much take care of it just like that. We've got both of our pieces scarfed at this point and they're ready to fit together. But the first thing we're going to do is bed down this after section with polysulfide. Now, we're going to spread one bead on the top of the in whale and a couple of beads on the top of the uh, guard and the top of the uh, shear plank. Now, it spreads itself. So what we're going to do then is just take the piece, clamp it right down on top of it and apply some clamps. Now, when you apply the clamps, it swims around a little bit. So what happens is you kind of have to correct yourself because it's not going to want to sit exactly where you put it. So you just got to loosen the clamps again after some of the bedding compounds been squeezed, adjust the position a little bit, tighten it up again a couple times, done deal, ready to nail it. We're actually going to nail the caps down to the in whales and to the gods because it's much, much faster and easier to do. And uh, there really isn't any disadvantage to it whatsoever that we can think of. So that's the way we go about it right here. Now that we've got that after section of covering board in place and fastened down, bedded with polysulfide, it's time for us to mix some epoxy glue. We're using Jamestown Distributors Total Boat 5 to 1 epoxy. Now, it mixes itself here. One pump of hardener to one pump of resin. The resin pumps five times as much as the hardener does, so it's a five to one mix. Simplest thing in the world. Make a couple of pumps of each one and uh, stir it up. Now, the only thing I can tell you about stirring this stuff is, is that the longer you stir it, the better it seems to go off and the better it works. And that's the case with all epoxies, as far as I can tell. So. We're going to stir it a little bit beyond what you might think uh, should be. And then what we're going to do after that is we're going to mix some thickening agent into it because it's just a little bit too thin and it'll just run out of the joint here. So we're just going to thicken it up some cotton fibers. We're going to apply some epoxy to the scarf that's on the piece that's nailed down on the boat first. 
And once we spread that around, then we're going to apply a little bit more to the bottom side of the next piece, the forward piece. And just to say that we put some on both surfaces. Now, it probably wouldn't have to be done that way, but I think it's a great thing to apply glue to both surfaces when you're gluing anything. And uh, that's what we've done. We also don't want to forget to apply polysulfide to the contact surface where this covering board is going to contact the guards and the in whales because we just don't want it to be wet like I said in there. So we're going to spread some polysulfide on there then we'll be able to pick up our covering board and drop it right down into position and uh, we're going to clamp it down. Now like I said before we have to be kind of careful with it. Once we get it to stay still we'll be able to drill it and nail it into position. The only thing we're not going to do is we're not going to nail it at the scarf. We're just going to clamp it at the scarf and let the glue dry. Once the glue is dried, I'll remove the clamps and then do a little bit of drilling and nailing at the scarf. So there are the two covering boards on the starboard side of the boat. Now we have to duplicate that work on the port side, but that's not a really big deal. And we've got a number of other things to do before the boat is really completed as far as the construction goes, plug the holes and all different things. But uh, I think one of the next things that's going to happen to it that's going to be pretty interesting is the finishing of the boat. We have to paint the whole boat, you know, we're going to paint the outside of the boat. We're actually only going to oil the inside of it, but it'll be interesting. and. Uh, you know, there's a few things that I'd like to say. Uh, people have been asking me about this boat and when they could come and see it and different things. Well, we finally reserved a, a time frame here that, that you can come and see the boat. It will be April 22nd at the Jamestown Distributors tent sale. Now, I'll be there and Halsey's going to be there and we're going to answer questions about this particular boat or just about anything else you'd like to know about. And uh, the only other thing I'd like to tell you is there's going to be another project after this boat for sure, by absolute certainty. Now, I've had a number of different thoughts and I've been kicking it around and kicking it around and I haven't decided exactly what the boat's going to be that I'm going to build. So once I've got that figured out, then I'll be letting you know immediately afterwards, but there will be another boat built, probably something a little bit smaller than this.